Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. I hope you guys are all enjoying. All of today's stories will be time marked down below as always. Let's hop into our first story though, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be so shocked by. More so, you guys are probably going to be very sick of hearing about this because by the time it happened in Sao Paulo, the announcement of MeBR, Made in Brazil, that organization, going to be a subsidiary organization to Immortals. So technically, if you play for MIBR, you're going to be playing for Immortals, but you can actually choose which name you play under. I'm not really sure how that one exactly works. We do, of course, have the XSK Gaming roster signing with them, with Stewie 2 on that roster. It'll be the official MeBR new roster, and it will be our new team in the major replacing SK Gaming. Now, going forward as well, everyone knew about this. We had tons of leaked photos, interviews. Pretty much by the time that this actual announcement was made, everyone out there knew it was going to happen. So, pretty much even Noah Winston was already accepting the fact that people knew about it. He was even talking about it a couple of days ahead of time as well. The ex SK Gaming roster is now going to be playing as MeBR or Made in Brazil. On top of that, though, more rumors are alleged as to who's going to take the SK Gaming spot, and it does mean for the time being, for the face it major coming up in September, we will have no SK Gaming roster, but it could be one of two options. Of course, it was rumored for the longest time it would be now Tem Como. Newest rumors say, though, it's going to be the Luminosity Gaming roster with the Twins obviously leaving now Tem Como going to LG. It could be that roster taking the place of now Tem Como, but either way, we actually have luckily enough now Tem Como, before they started failing these last few weeks in terms of match play, they luckily did qualify for the American Minor. They're already in there. They'll be one of those eight teams competing for two spots for the major, and also we do have Luminosity Gaming, though, in the closed American qualifier for that minor. That's 16 teams right there right now. Luminosity Gaming is safely within top eight. They have a good chance to actually be one of those six teams to go to the minor. So it could be going forward, guys, to kind of make it less complicated. One of two options. Either the current Luminosity Gaming uh, roster with the Twins, Henny and Lucas, will go to and join that and take that SK Gaming spot. They'll play under that organization. Or the now Tem Como roster, which has been struggling a lot lately. They're losing teams like Valiant, Valence, and as well as on top of that, not even winning the Zotac Cup, which has had a lot of lower tier teams teams there. They were definitely probably your favorite in terms of talent, although they did play second. Uh, again, kind of a letdown performance there. and it was Really kind of interesting to see how Bit's been struggling as their IGL, as well as KNG not performing near as well as he was uh, when he was back with that old roster as well. We're going to see which roster takes over the SK Gaming spot, and either way, not, even if it is Naotem Como or it's going to be Luminosity Gaming, there's a good chance we're not going to see SK Gaming have an actual spot in the major for the first time in the last couple years. And in this next segment, let's talk about rumors out there. Luckily enough, before this caught any traction, we had the Rush B podcast, a great podcast for the CSGO scene. I'll link them down below. Catching this fake tweet out there, which again, did not catch any traction, but of course that does involve Croman for that FaZe Clan roster. Croman actually subbed in for a long time with Heroic. He did a great job subbing in for, for Rubino, and no one expected how well he would play for that team. And again, they did win, a, win ESL Bela Horizonte. He's been doing a great job filling in for Olaf Meister, and no one quite knows who's going to be his permanent replacement, as it seems he will not be coming back, but this was actually a fake tweet. And again, it's kind of crazy how people can allude and, and, and just kind of twist images like that. That. But again, no one knows the phase kind of announcement as of right now. We talked about this last week and people are still questioning MBK, Apex, why have they not been bought out yet? Apparently their G2 buyouts are just way too high and Ocelot, the owner over there, kind of holding them hostage and that's why Cloud9 and FaZe Clan could not buy out Apex or MBK. Apparently the buyouts are ridiculous over there and more expensive than even Stewie2K according to Decay and other reporters out there. So on top of that, so maybe some stuff that might not be fake in the future and stuff that I'm very excited to announce if it does ever come is the possibility of MP5 and other things coming with the UI panorama, panorama release. And I'm sure a lot of you guys saw last week, we saw the UI Panorama released in beta. We had three subsequent updates coming for that with a lot of different minor changes out there. And we also had a community member out there make a new mod, I guess not really a mod, a new kind of a, a program himself. He actually put the MP5 into his game and that download is available via his Reddit post. I'll link it down below for all of you. It's an amazing thing to watch as well because it brings you back all the way to the old gameplay I used to watch. And again, I wasn't playing CSGO back in the day, but originally, uh, again, not even even CSGO with CS and 1.6 as well, uh, CS 1.6 in Source, we did see the MP5 and eventually the MP7 did come to replace that. So everyone alluding to the fact that CSGO kind of returning to its roots as well as announcing some big things out there, we could possibly see with the UI Panorama, maybe the return of the MP5, maybe even a silenced version of it. Of course, that would kind of be a substitute for the CT side, that, that having the M4A1S as well as an MP5S. Would it replace the MP7 altogether? Would it replace some other SMGs? Maybe just one or the other because again, back in the day, it was only the MP7 we had the option for, and then with CSGO being launched, we had a lot more options when it came to SMGs, the MP7, the UMP, as well as the, the PB Bison for different situations economically. So it'd be very cool to see if Valve does add a new weapon, will they replace the weapon as well, or will they add in the MP5 altogether? Either way, it's kind of fun to talk about what other things could happen to the game of CSGO. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. I would love a new weapon out there, a new weapon to kind of just use in casual and kind of maybe dedicate myself to and get myself back into the game. On top of that, though, something I would 
would not want to see is the possibility though people have seen the Zeus has an inspect option now of course with the UI panorama being in beta pretty much everything has an inspect option but this is quite unique the UM uh, the, of course the Zeus never had an inspect option it's always been there as a default skin but now with the fact it does have this inspect option people speculate that Zeus skins could be coming soon and I swear if this is a thing uh, what's next guys colored smokes and bouncing back a couple stories to the American clothes qualifier going on right now We do have of course uh, showing you guys the results on screen It's been pretty much straightforward so far any team expected to go top eight so far literally is top eight and all teams You haven't really heard of before the kind of the, the lower tier teams out there You were hoping maybe to make an upset are not going to be making that upset one of them actually is going to be the entourage Entourage has in fact replaced one of the teams known as fam 143 though that team It's great to see face it very on top of this kind of stuff as they post this tweet a couple nights ago that fam one 143 roster has been banned and actually disqualified from the tournament because one of their players had a VAC ban connected to one of his accounts and yes that VAC ban reportedly was nearly four years old so I'm not sure if I feel bad for the guy or maybe I, feel, I give props to face for looking so in depth for these VAC ban ties so again for all of you kids out there younger members who are watching these videos if you're ever going to cheat in a game it's going to bound to come back to bite you in the butt and karma for sure for this guy who knows if he was actually cheating legitly back in the day or maybe just for a fun when he was younger because again it was only four, almost four years ago so he probably probably was in his, his younger teenage years, so it's crazy to see that kind of bites you in the butt, and again, they probably had not too good of a chance to make the minor itself, but again, the team who replaced them, Entourage, is also not looking too hot, but again, they did get their shot because of this, so that was in crazy news out there. A couple more stories to finish off today's episode for all of you. We do have some more analysis on apparently all the skins lost in OP skins. Now, if you guys did see the Don's post about this, he actually had uh, another person on the, on the Global Offensive Trade Reddit as well posted about this and actually corrected him on his initial amount, which is a bit too high, but apparently Apparently still we were, we were correct on our estimate yesterday it was a few million dollars or close to that that have actually been lost officially on OP skins now the actual stats are very uh, kind of horrendous as well you almost feel bad for these people and it makes you question how people could actually forget about skins like this so keep note that a lot of these people who actually left money on OP skins were most likely trade banned accounts or banned accounts or locked accounts on OP skins they were actually doing that quite a bit the last few months I got several DMs for people who lost several thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars on OP skins accounts because they were out of nowhere locked out of their accounts and you're not really given any communication as to why so some sketchy business going on there and again OP skins had a lot of people to deal with about that but if they saw your account tied to anything I guess they could say anything substantially sketchy they locked your account and that's why a lot of these accounts actually left so much money on them but apparently this guy actually had a program running across over almost 3,000 accounts on OP skins to calculate how much it was actually lost and it was almost two million dollars just about over 1.5 million items worth just shy of two million dollars have been lost in CSGO skins now if you guys Guys get a little comparison as well it's really not too much because back in the day I think it was about before the seven-day trade ban three to four million dollars in skins were traded on the steam market every single day so that gives you a little I guess a little bit of a number as to how little skins this actually is and it probably won't affect the market whatsoever but it makes you feel bad for the 500 plus people who actually left over a thousand dollars in OP skins account next to that as well almost 1500 people left five hundred dollars or more on their account some staggering numbers there it's kind of kind of weird to see that I would never leave anything on that account because it's pretty much free money and giving your items back. Um, but yeah, it's pretty crazy to see almost $2 million have been lost out of the CSGO market, but that's not even not even a small pocket change portion. And very lastly, I want to leave the story for the back half of today's episode to really see who watches these entire videos because honestly, myself, I don't really watch YouTube videos this late into the video very often. So I'm really curious if you guys are watching right now, please leave a comment down below, say cheese balls or something. But I also wanted to put this story in the back half of the episode because it's a pretty serious issue. And that is, of course, ESL Bela Horizonte, that our first actual you know a professional tournament in terms of high tier teams who were there SK gaming mouse sports phase clan we also big space soldiers so and so I think it was also torqued was there as well and I'm missing one other team who was there it was an eight team tournament so kind of a smaller prize pool but still a big ESL event hosted in Brazil for the first time in a long time and you guys are probably aware of the reasons why many pro players do not want to go anywhere in Brazil because of the fanatic fans and we were trying to escape the entire weekend and again this is actually the previous weekend the one before this one so this is a bit dated in news and I never actually talked about it because I was a bit scared for the reaction I really want to know what you guys think about this is fanatic fans and I think Brazil now defines the term fanatic and what I mean by that is they are so dedicated so willing so loving of their teams they're willing to go to an extent that other fans will not now I'm not saying other fans are perfect every fan base has their bad fans but we actually are going off space holders major and his most recent post about this him getting spit on him getting pushed and shoved and berated by fans 
at ESO Bela Horizonte is a pretty tremendous story. Now, on top of that, though, why I say fanatics? Because there are two sides of fanatic fans. There are fanatic fans that will hate the opponent so much uh, that they're willing to do anything like spit on you, like shove you, like berate you verbally, but there's also fanatic fans that are so loyal, so loving, they will do anything just to, I guess, kind of flourish the sport itself, support their team, as well as, I, I guess, make up for the bad fans, if that makes any sense. Mejir posted pictures of people who are writing him notes and, and hundreds of fans who are apparently apologizing for other fanatic fans out there. So my, my overall question is this, are fanatic fans good or bad for the sport? Does this make pros want to probably go to Brazil? Most likely not. Does it make fans, our players want to have Brazilian fans? Most likely. I think Mejer probably earned more fans there than he did lose them, but it's just kind of crazy to see the reactions about this. I really, I, the main reaction so far that we've seen is people blaming the entire Brazilian fan base for what the very, very few do. I, I, I highly doubt that it was more than a couple people, if maximum more than one person who actually did the spitting, did the shoving, and so it's crazy to see we continue to judge these people based off a few of their actions. And I, I know there's not much to make up for it. Again, there's probably a lot more fanatic Brazilian fans doing that kind of stuff than other, other countries out there, but again, they do get stuck in a bad light because of those very few fans. So overall, it was a good ending. Of course, Brazilian fans doing the great thing and apologizing for what they did, but it's crazy to see that they continue uh, to kind of have this bad image about them ever since Hiko uh, back in the day as well. He was actually uh, sent death threats to him and his family when he was in Brazil as well. So it's kind of crazy to see. We never hear these stories about other countries, but when you have an event in Brazil, you never know what to expect. As always, hope you all enjoy. If you guys uh, care about uh, life updates, I'm I'm just I'm crazy tired here, guys. I'm also a little bit angry because all my furniture got delayed. So uh, I was supposed to have a bed yesterday and a, a table and a couch. And honestly, if you guys can see, I've had no chairs except for my computer chair. Literally nothing else. There's the kitchen and all that. No bar stools, nothing to sit on. So when I come home from work every day, I, I just stand here. I make a video and I go sit in my chair and then I sit on the floor over here. So everything's been delayed. I apparently. Uh, Apparently we'll get a bed in a few days and then a table and chair couches couch in like a week I don't I don't know so just really stressful over here uh, thank you all for the great comments I know I've, I tried to reply to some comments I just haven't had the time so please leave a comment now I will have tomorrow to reply so if you guys want to ask any questions or say anything feel free to comment down below I will see you guys next time remember I like you um, my name is Jake by the way okay goodbye. <laughs>